When building Lambda functions, we often need to store configuration and sensitive information. AWS provides various services like Parameter Store, Secrets Manager, etc. to store these configuration and other sensitive information. The AWS Lambda Power Tools library has a parameters package which makes it easy to integrate with these different services and retrieve values from them when building Lambda functions. In this video, let's learn how to get started using the parameters package from the Power Tools library. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. Channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud, and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. The Power Tools for AWS Lambda is a suite of utilities for Lambda functions to ease adopting best practices such as tracing, structured logging, custom metrics, parameters, and more. I have covered a few of these utilities in this channel before and the video links will be in the descriptions below. The parameters utilities provides high level functionality to retrieve one or multiple parameter values from AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store, AWS Secrets Manager or Amazon DynamoDB. You can also bring your own custom providers and extend this utility to integrate with them. Now, some of the key features of this package include retrieving one or multiple parameters from the underlying provider, cache the parameter values for a given time, transform the values, example, if you have it stored in JSON, you can automatically transform it into .NET type, or you can even handle base64 encoded strings. Let's look at how to get started using this library when building your Lambda function. Let's switch over to Visual Studio. Here, I have a solution, Lambda Power Tools, which I have been using in in my previous videos where I showed the item potency package, the logging, metrics, and tracing libraries. I have added a new project inside this Lambda Power Tools parameters. This has the function.cs, which has the method get parameters. This simply returns a list of string, which for now returns a key value string, which is formatted as a key with two hyphens and the value. Now, as we integrate with these different services, Parameter Store and Secrets Manager, I will retrieve the values from that and return in this API. However, in your real world application, you will be using these configuration values to connect to external services, to connect to databases, or for other configuration related information. You wouldn't be returning this back in an API endpoint. This is purely for demo purposes so that we can see that the values are getting returned as expected. If this function uses the Lambda annotations framework to build this Lambda function. Now, if you're completely new to annotations framework, I highly recommend checking out my video, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. It makes building Lambda functions really easy. As you can see, all we need to do is set up attributes from the annotations package to mark up this Lambda function. Now, this Lambda function is integrated with the API gateway by just adding this parameter. And I have set up the route parameters right inside my code. To integrate with the Power Tools parameters, let's right click and say Manage NuGet Packages. And let's search for the Power Tools parameters package. Let's add the AWS Lambda.PowerTools.Parameters NuGet package to our project. The package is successfully added. So let's come back to our functions.cs and start using the package. The first service that we will integrate with is the AWS Parameter Store. The AWS Parameter Store is a centralized secure store for your application configuration. The Parameter Store is part of the AWS Systems Manager and it provides a secure storage for application configuration and secret data. So you can store configuration information and other sensitive information like passwords, database connection strings, API keys, etc. as parameter values. If you're completely new to the AWS Parameter Store, I highly recommend checking out my video and the blog post, which will be linked in the descriptions below. Now, if I switch over to my AWS console, let's navigate to the Parameter Store so we can search for Parameter Store and navigate to that from here. Now, I have a few values already set up inside the Parameter Store in my account. So we will be using code to retrieve these values. So let's say in this case, we want to retrieve the value of the parameter value one using the package that we just added. So let's switch over to our function code. To start using the parameters package, we can use the parameters manager class, which is coming from the AWS Lambda Power Tools parameters package that we just added. So let's use the parameters manager. This exposes the SSM provider. This is a static class which implements the iSSM provider. So let's use this SSM provider 
and use the get async method to return the value. So in this case, we need to pass in the key value one. The ones we have passed in the key, we can return this value. So since this is an asynchronous method, let's specify where value one is equal to and add in the await keyword. Now, once we have the value, we can start using this in our application. Now for demo purposes, let me add this to the parameters collection that I am building up here. So let's specify the add method and let's also use the format key value, pass in the key as value one and the value as value one, which we just return back. Now the parameters manager SSM provider also supports getting multiple values at the same time. So if I switch back to the parameters manager, let's say I want to retrieve all the parameters that starts with slash weather app. So in this case, I have two parameters under my parameters account. So let's see how we can retrieve both of these values in a single call from your application. So let's switch back. Let's say where multiple values use the parameters manager dot SSM provider and let's use the get multiple async. In this case, we need to pass the prefix of the key values that we are going to retrieve. So in this case, that's going to be slash weather app. So let's copy that, switch back and paste it in here. So this is going to get all the values that starts with slash weather app. Now in this case, the get multiple async is going to return a dictionary of string string, which is a key value pair. Let's loop through these multiple values. So let's specify for each multiple values. So let's specify multiple value and let's add this to the parameters collection that we have. So let's specify parameters dot add format key value and let's choose the multiple value dot key and the multiple value dot value. So this is going to loop through each of these items and add this to our collection. Now, since this Lambda function is going to talk to the parameters store to retrieve these values, it needs the appropriate permissions and roles so that it can retrieve these values. Now, if you switch back to the AWS Power Tools documentation, you can see the IAM permissions required for each of these methods that we are using. So if you're using the SSM parameter store to call the get, we need the IAM permission get parameter on the specified string or on the entire parameter store keys. Now to get multiple, we need to have the SSM get parameters by path permission. So let's add these two permissions to our Lambda function. With the annotations framework, it automatically generates a serverless.template file, which I can use to specify the role information. Now I already have a dummy role set up, which is the parameters API Lambda execution role, which currently provides the AWS basic Lambda execution role and also X-ray permissions. Now let's add in the new policy to allow this to talk to parameter store. I'll copy and paste the policy and walk you through it. Here I have the new policy, which gives the action SSM get parameter star, which means it gives all the actions that starts with get parameter. Now in our case, what we need is get parameter and also get parameters by path. Now we could explicitly specify both of these, but I have chosen to get parameter star, which covers both of these permissions. Now I'm also explicitly specifying the ARN for the resources that we need access to. In our case, we need access to slash value one, and we also need to have access for all the keys that's under slash weather app, which is why I have specified the star here to get access to all those keys. Since these are the only two resources that we need access to, I'm explicitly specifying just that. Now this role has the name parameter API Lambda execution role, which is getting applied on this function on the Lambda function attribute using the role and by specifying the at and the name itself. Now, this is something that the annotations framework supports and which is what I'm using. Once we have specified this, let's right click and deploy this to Lambda and see this in action. The deployment is complete. So let's navigate to this URL to hit the API endpoint. So we have specified the API route path as parameter. So let's navigate to that. Now this is going to hit our Lambda function and return the key value pairs. So you can see that it returns the value one and which the value appropriately for that, which is value one dash two. And it also returns all the keys that starts with slash weather app. You can see that it returns the value one and also the value two parameters under the slash weather app and the appropriate values from the parameter store. 
Now, in your real world application, you will be using this to connect to different services, databases, or other configuration information. The parameters package also supports advanced configuration, which includes caching of the keys. By default, the values returned are cached for 5 seconds. So, if you make subsequent calls in under 5 seconds, it is going to return the same value. However, after 5 seconds, it is going to retrieve the latest value from parameter store and return that to your application. This is very useful and important to reduce the number of calls that you make to parameter store. So, if the value of the configuration doesn't change that often, you could configure a higher value for this particular configuration. To do that, all you need to specify is using the SSM provider, you can specify the default max age and specify the duration in time span. Now the default max age is going to get applied for all the parameters that you're going to get using the SSM provider. Now if you want to apply for specific parameters, you can also specify the width max age when calling this particular specific parameter method. For example, before calling the get async, into the SSM provider, you can specify the width max age, specify a time span, so let's say time span from seconds, and pass in a different value, so let's say 10, and this is going to cache this value for 10 seconds. The parameters package also supports transforming values. Let's say for example, you have the configuration in base64 or JSON values, you can transform this into .NET types using the transformation. So for example, let's switch back to my parameter store. Here I have a my configuration, which is represented as a JSON value. Now this has the properties secrets and URL under that inside this configuration value. So we can use transformation to retrieve this value from our code. So let's switch back to the function code. Let's create a new configuration class which has the secret and URL properties as string attributes. And let's use this my configuration to transform the value. So, in this particular case, we can again use var configuration and specify the await parameters manager.ssm provider with transformation. In this case, we are going to use transformation.json. And let's use this to get the value. So, we can specify get async. We can specify a type inside here. So in this case, this is going to be of type my configuration. And let's pass in the key that is appropriate for this. So let's make sure to format this. And let's pass the key here. So the key is in this particular case, my configuration. So let me copy that and let's paste it in here. Now, once we have retrieved the configuration, we can use this in our application as required. So let me add this to the parameters collection. Let's use the format key value. Let's specify the my configuration as the key. And for the value in this particular case, let's use string interpolation. Let's specify configuration.url. Let's specify a colon and let's also specify the configuration.secret. So this is going to return both these values. Now, since this needs to retrieve this new my configuration value, we need to make sure that this ARN is also added and the Lambda function has permissions to retrieve this configuration value. So let's switch back, let's switch over to the serverless.template and let's add in the new resource as well. So let's, let's paste this ARN key that we copied, which gives access to my configuration. Now, once we deploy and hit this API endpoint, it is going to return this new value as well. Let's see that in action. With the deployment complete, let's switch back and let's refresh this API endpoint. Now you can see it returns the my configuration and it returns the URL and the secret from this parameter store. Now similar to transforming JSON strings, you can also transform base64 values. The parameters package also supports integrating with secrets manager. Now secrets manager is another AWS service that supports storing sensitive information. Now secrets manager provides a centralized store to manage your application secrets. Again, you can store information like passwords, credentials, connection strings, etc. inside Secrets Manager. Let's see how we can easily integrate with Secrets Manager using this parameters package. So if I switch back to my AWS account, let's go to Secrets Manager by searching for Secrets Manager and navigating to that. Here again, I have a secret already added, which has the key weather app secret one. Now this has the value already configured inside this. So let's see how we can use the package to retrieve this value. So let's switch back to Visual Studio. Now, similar to using the parameters manager, let's specify where secret, 
one is equal to, let's use the await keyword and use the parameters manager. Now in this case, instead of using the SSM provider, let's use the secrets provider to interact with the secrets manager. So let's specify secrets provider. Let's use the get async method to return the value of the secret. So let's specify the secret key, which is weather app slash secret one. And this returns the value of the secret from the secrets manager. Once we have the secret, we can use this inside our application. For now, let me add this to the parameters collection. So let's specify the format key method. Let's pass in the key, which is going to be weather app slash secret one. And let's also pass the value, which is secret one. Now, again, coming back to the permissions of the parameters, you can see that for getting a value from the secrets manager, we need to give the permission secrets manager call and get secret value. So let's add this inside our template. So let's switch back. Let's go to our serverless.template and add a new policy to talk to secrets manager. So let's copy and paste the new policy. In this case, we have the parameters API secret store policy, which gives permission for secrets manager call and get secret value method on this specific resource, which is weather app slash secret one. Now, once we have specified this, let's deploy this and see this in action. The deployment is complete. So let's switch back to our URL and refresh this to get the latest values. Now you can see here, this is returning the weather app secret one and it returns the value secret value one. So we have successfully integrated with secrets manager and returned a value from that. Now, one thing to note when interacting with secrets manager is that it does not support the get multiple call. However, if you go to the secrets provider in the functions.cs and look at the method parameter signature, so let's do a dot on parameters manager dot secrets provider get, it does provide the get multiple method. However, this is going to throw an exception if you use this against the secrets provider. Now that exception is going to be at runtime and this is not a great experience when using a package library. Maybe there will be an update in the future to support these scenarios. The last provider that this parameter package supports out of the box is the DynamoDB provider. So you can store parameters stored in your DynamoDB table and retrieve it using this particular package. Now, all you need to have is a table with the partition key as the ID and the value inside that. Now, once you have a table like this, you can use the DynamoDB provider, specify the table that you need to use, and then use the DynamoDB provider to get the values from there. So you can use the get async method, similar to how we used it against the secrets manager, and pass in the key and retrieve the value from that. I will leave that for you to try and explore. Now, if you want to add custom providers for your business applications, you can also do that by inheriting from the base provider class and implementing the appropriate functions. Now, in the documentation, you can see an example of how to create a custom provider that talks to Amazon S3 and retrieve the parameter values from that. I hope this helps you to get started with the parameters NuGet package that is provided as part of the PowerTools library. The parameters package makes it extremely easy to integrate with the AWS service to retrieve configuration values in your Lambda functions. When building applications, it's very important to keep in mind to not have your parameter values and configuration values hard-coded inside your application, especially for sensitive values like connection strings, API keys, etc. It is recommended to use an external storage like the parameter stores or secrets manager and integrate it with your applications like we saw in this demo. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit that subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.